Hey sports fans, it's Carrie at the Racine Heritage Museum and today we are celebrating Women's History Month as well as one of our favorite sports stories, the Racine Dolls. So as we know, uh, baseball was one of the most popular pastimes in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. They didn't have TV or internet then, so people's favorite thing to do was go to a game or listen to it on the radio or play baseball. However, when World War II broke out, a lot of the men who played the game or watched the game were called overseas to the war. And so uh, the owner of Wrigley Field, Philip K. Wrigley, who also owned the Chicago Cubs, had a great idea to start a girls baseball league. Now at first people thought he was crazy. Women didn't play sports professionally in those days and everybody was really concerned that the girls would lose some of their femininity or nobody would want to watch girls play baseball, but he knew he had a great idea. So his idea was to start teams in small Midwestern cities and some business in the city would finance half the cost, he would finance the other half. So here in Racine, it was Western Publishing. They financed half the cost of the Bells and they also printed up a lot of their yearbooks and programs and different things. Um, so it was a great partnership. The Bells were the first of four teams in the league which eventually grew to 12 teams over time. Now, as I said, they didn't take them real seriously at first. So a lot of the players didn't have adequate equipment. So they might have a right hand glove, even though they would catch with their left hand. Um, so they have to switch. They might not have proper cleats. Anastasia Batikas actually had bowling shoes with cleats tacked on. They didn't have batting helmets. They didn't have batting gloves. Um, and as you can see, this is a typical costume that they would wear. This is really not adequate for playing baseball. But again, the most important thing was be at all times a lady. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that when they would go to spring training, not only would they have to do their physical workouts to get strong and ready to play, they would also have to go to a beauty parlor and get their hair done and get taught how to put on makeup and have etiquette lessons, how to get in and out of a car, how to um, sit at a table and have proper table manners, how to put on a coat, um, all kinds of things that today we may not pay attention to, but were very important for women to have proper etiquette back in those days. They would have to rub soap under their fingernails so they wouldn't get dirt under their nails. Um, they had all kinds of rules about curfew, no drinking alcohol, no gambling, no wearing shorts in public, no wearing pants in public. They could only go on dates that had been interviewed ahead of time. And even then, they had to go on a date with a chaperone. So just tons and tons of rules for them to make sure that they were always proper, always going to bat with lipstick on. And as I said, you know, they didn't take them seriously as professional athletes, but once these girls started playing, they realized that they had some real talent. And so the league became very popular. The games were very highly attended. People loved to watch them play and definitely took them seriously over time. Now, the girls gave it their all. They played hard. And one of my favorite players, Sophie Curry's, which we highlighted recently on our Facebook page, she was known as the Flint Flash and her specialty was sliding into bases. And you can imagine sliding into base with a skirt like this, what would happen to your legs? Well, her legs were racked because she would have so many injuries on them. These abrasions that they would get from sliding into base, they would call them strawberries and all the girls got them. Um, another player, Irene, who was all, Irene Hickson, who was also known as Choo Choo or Tuffy, played an entire 12 game series with a broken finger on her throwing hand. So these girls were really tough, um, but they just wanted to play the game. They were paid between 150 to, or I'm sorry, 50 to $150 a week which was great money for an 18 year old girl in 1943, 1944. Um, but they worked hard for that money. They played about 120 games a season, which was about six games a week, two games on Sunday. So they didn't get a lot of sleep. They just had to go, 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 but they loved it. In 1943, the first year of the league, the Racine Bells beat the Kenosha Comets in a three straight game series and became the first world champion of girls professional baseball, which is pretty exciting. 
they went ahead and won the pennant again three years later in 1946. Um, so unfortunately, um, girls baseball kind of started to wane around the 1950s because of the invention of television. Uh, people were spending more time at home watching TV, they weren't getting out to the games as much, and so the league really dropped off after that. Um, now, it kind of went unnoticed and, and not thought about for a very long time. It wasn't until 1988 that the uh, National Baseball Hall of Fame finally recognized the AAG PBL, All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, and they had an exhibit opening that weekend um, where normally two to 300 people come to their museum on the weekend, but the weekend that their uh, women's baseball exhibit opened, they had over 1,100 visitors. So it was a huge success. People were very excited to see the girls honored. And Penny Marshall was one of the visitors who came to the museum that weekend, and she became inspired to make the movie A League of Their Own, which actually, they used our own Racine Heritage Museum archives to do the research for the movie. The players that were interviewed said that the movie was very accurate. They felt that um, it was done very well. And the movie did great. It was number one at the box office for several weeks and grossed over $108 million. So um, we're really excited to be a part of history, to be even a part of Hollywood history and we love the story of the Bells. We're gonna be showing more uh, pictures and, and different facts about the Bells in the coming weeks, so stay tuned, and thanks for watching. Bye.